everybody. Hey, how are you? Good, good. I'm trying to put my. <laughs> yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Sister. Okay. Yeah, let me put my. I'm trying to adjust. Sorry. Sorry for joining in late. <laughs> yes, hi. Oh, hello. How, how is everybody? Sapco, hello. Sapco, hello. <laughs> mira, mira, nam Josette, Josette, <laughs> hey. Mira, nam Josette, hey. <laughs> okay, sister, sister, we are ready. Okay, all right. We are ready. Okay, so let, let us pray. Let us let us say a word of prayer. Okay, Father. Let us pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you that we have this time to study your word. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will bless us even as we study. I thank you for your people, oh God, your people in Pakistan. I thank you for my brothers, my sisters. As they've come, oh God, I pray that you will speak through me in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that they will be blessed with this word in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for everything you do for us. Amen. 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 Sister, we are singing one gospel song. Okay. So, sister, you can. You can, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh. Amen. Yes. Okay. Um, do you um interpret? Would you be able to translate? Uh can you translate? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, I can okay. I can translate you. All right. Okay, so today uh, we want to talk about um, the uh, Bible passage that uh, Pastor John gave to me. Shukari, <laughs> Pastor John. Um, uh -huh. So John uh, 9, John 9, 15, that was the passage that he gave us. Chapter 9? Yes, John chapter 9. John chapter nine. John chapter 9, sister? Yes, John chapter 9. We will start with verse 1. Yeah, let's start with verse 1. Okay, sister. Yes. Okay. Aye, hum apne sarul ko jukate hain. Par dua mangte hain khuda an khuda. Hum tere huzur jukte hain mere khuda aaj ke din ke liye dua mangte hain ki aaj ka din hai khuda an khuda tune hamari zindagi mein bakhsha. जला हम दुआ मांगते हैं खुदा खुदा सिस्टर जे सी पी के लिए खुदा खुदा जो है खुदा खुदा तेरे कलाम की मुनादी करते हैं मेरे खुदा ए खुदा खुदा अपनी ए खुदा खुदा बेटी जे सी पी को ए खुदा खुदा छू ताकि वो तेरे नाम को इज्जत और जलाल दे As I promised, I said I would do um, one more episode before we meet uh, for the next part, with, which would be um, the dreams um, part when we talk about dreams. But today I just want to talk about directions and last episode we didn't go through um the questions i i just ended it so um the questions that came through um some of it was personal but the two of them i wanted to address here before we talk about directions and the first one was when i mentioned something about doing business with someone that god told me was a witch and another thing that came through okay let me handle that one first so um the question was are we supposed to do business with um unbelievers if you're a believer um what's my take on that um i say um first of all we are we are in this world so you can as long as it doesn't affect your walk with god as long as it is legal as long as it is holy you know my phrase as long as it is legal and it is holy you can do business with unbelievers there's no law in the bible um and again correct me if i'm wrong but i don't see any law in the bible that says oh no don't deal with unbelievers don't don't sell or don't buy um goods from unbelievers like first of all how would you leave if you don't um interact with people of the world like i i don't understand that um it's it's very um extreme for you to think that you would live in this world 
and don't work with unbelievers or don't do business with unbelievers again as long as it is legal um and it it does not affect your faith okay um for example um some people had issues with me selling um vending machines that are cannabis um that sell cannabis products so i sell vending machines i don't sell cannabis okay and i live in a city that um the city uh, in, in oklahoma that permits the sale of medicinal cannabis so if i have a client that wants to buy one of my vending machines my vending machines are open to any product so we sell beverages we sell uh you can use the vending machine to sell beverages to sell whatever you want to sell so i would not be like too legalistic to say oh no my vending machines are just for beverages or food or whatever i don't sell vending machines for cannabis products when majority of businesses here in oklahoma are dispensaries and and let's not fool ourselves most of the people that do have money don't believe in the god that we serve they don't many of them are they are the people with the money so you cannot just say oh i'm not gonna work with unbelievers as long as it does not affect your faith so i am not gonna sell um cannabis or put it in my mouth when in fact what is legal is is medicinal cannabis okay and it's for medicinal purposes and i won't go into all of that because that's not the purpose of this video but what i'm saying is i would not do anything or uh, do business with anybody and first of all they already know me they know that's why your light should show so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to the father in heaven i have worked with secular artists for example um i did a collaboration with one who knowingly curses on his on his songs but when he did a song for me he did a rap for me he never said a word of curse you know language in my profanity in my in my in my song and i did not even have to tell him he knew automatically that if you're doing a song for josette you're doing a song with jcp you don't curse in there you don't put profanity in there it was just understood you know so i didn't even have to tell him so if your light don't shine like if you are like lukewarm and everybody knows you're lukewarm then stay away from it and we'll talk about convictions later you know if i was a known cannabis user or anything i would stay away from that kind of business you know but i've never taken cannabis in my life i've never smoked or or you know done any drug so as long as it is legal again all right i would not do this for for example in texas because obviously i would not sell a vending machine to someone who is doing something like that in texas because it's not legal in texas so make sure that it is legal wherever you are whatever business is and also it is it doesn't affect your faith it is holy it doesn't contaminate your faith okay so things like writing a song for example because i'm just using some of the businesses that i do i can write a song for a secular artist i can work with a secular artist okay but there are boundaries because of my faith okay so any business whatsoever there are boundaries because of your faith you cannot say okay i'm gonna do this but then i i, I step out of my faith just to please you or just to appease my no no that that's when you you draw the line so like um i was doing an app for a customer of mine um they were a couple and they they kind of fooled me to say oh we go to your church and but it's a big church so 
I was looking around the church. I've never seen them. But because it's a big church, I'm thinking, okay, maybe they come, maybe they don't. Uh, you know, and then I realized they wanted to do something because I'm thorough. You know, I check everything. They wanted to do something that would rope me into some mess. I'm like, uh, -uh, uh not over here. It's not gonna. It's not gonna fly. I, I can't rope my name because this is my name tied to this product. I can't do this. You know yeah they got upset uh it, it was a lot they even wanted to mess me up but holy spirit is my is my keeper is my he's the one that keeps me so obviously their plans did not work and we sever the relationship we just sever everything because for me my faith comes first all right business comes later and not, not not just my faith my 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 career my reputation my future it comes first so if you have that in mind you can do business with anybody okay and again as i said the people who have the money in this world because this world we'll, t we'll talk about that later um when the devil tempted jesus to say i will give you all the the wealth of this world he he knew what he was talking about all right the wealth of this world he he's got it so um many of the people that do have money they're not christians so you cannot say because you you are a christian you should not walk with anybody because they're unbeliever or you know and and if you know me when i talk about sin every sin it, it the sin is a sin i don't i don't categorize sins like oh oh because this is witchcraft this is a a bigger sin or because this person is a homosexual that's that's a un unforgivable sin no a sin is a sin so whatever sin anybody commits is <laughs> that person is a sinner you know and even believers sin too the, the thing is we should not continue in sin all right but even believers sin so you cannot use sin to say oh because this person is a sinner i'm not going to associate myself with them man that's very legalistic because first of all again follow jesus to the letter when he came to this earth he was the only blameless sinless human being walking the face of the earth would he say, oh, because I, I don't want to contaminate myself, I'm not going to be talking to sinners? Then he will not be talking to nobody. <laughs> Everybody all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So again, don't be too legalistic to say, oh, I, I shouldn't do business with this person. I shouldn't do, um, play music if you're a musician. And you know, I, I, shouldn't, I should only play for the church. If you play only for the church, you'll be broke for life, bro. You'll be because <laughs> many churches it was quite recent it was even when i came to the u.s that i found out that they actually pay people in church to 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 work in church because in africa they don't pay you you come and play for the lord you do it for the lord <laughs> for the lord you, you don't pay you you know and we used to spend hours in church rehearsing and doing the only time i remember that i used to and and i had to talk to our pastor and we had to take money from our own pocket because for me if the music is not uh, i have that irritation like i need the music to be dope you know because they used to call me dope auntie i like i like the beats to be like dope you know so we would actually pay um someone to come and, and, and play who was a total unbeliever but later on, later on the person became saved you see you see another that's that's another thing you can you can evangelize through that just by being close to the person working with the person they would see your good works you know and and be drawn to christ because of you you know that guy used to come we would just pay him he was just a reggae guy that plays in the club or something and he used to come we pay him comes and plays he goes and then he started staying like after a while he would play most times he used to play as soon as his 
done playing he would just disappear and maybe like close to the end of the service we're looking for him because you know when when the service is ending the pastor would want to do a few like you know benediction kind of songs and he wouldn't there would be no <laughs> no musician he would have gone by then but with time he started staying back like I, I started observing him i would ask him are you not leaving are you are you staying you know because usually um he would come up for his money but as soon as he's done and then i would go to meet him and say do you want your money now are you staying are you leaving and he would be like no nah, i'll just stay for the rest of the service you know and he started liking the service he, he became a member you know so he became baptized that day I, I i got tears in my eyes when i saw him baptized because i was like whoa you see so don't discount people don't don't that is very legalistic and that's the thing i don't like about some christians they just they just um uh, uh write off certain people because of the sin that certain people are involved in don't write off people um drug addicts prostitutes whatever these people are human beings they have souls if you can't evangelize to them just leave them alone but don't don't be judgy too judgy you know um so yeah that that was the thing i wanted to address because um some of the questions were personal and i i re responded but that one i really wanted everybody to know about it and then the second uh, question that I got was um, something about um, like um, if you have, uh, someone was asking um, when I was talking about um, God dropped in my spirit about my husband. Um, and then if you have a discernment about someone, should you tell the person? Um in my opinion, I I tend to keep it to myself and pray about it. But if it's something that um, uh, maybe a sin um, that the person is is knowingly committing, and probably you you are like you you catch them in the act or something like that it is good to address it don't just leave it hanging you know and sometimes some people might even feel like i told you i felt hurt by the fact that some people um did not approach me whether it's 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 true or false at least ask me and try to know um, why I'm doing that or what, what what you heard but most people just walk away or, 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 or avoid you or talk about you so in that case I would say address it like especially if if they're a close friend or someone that you're very familiar with that you see every day or you talk to every day talk to them about what you you learned from God you can even say it's from God okay um address the situation don't just go on living with them and and you knowingly know what they're going through or stuff like that and you don't say nothing you know um for me um i found an aa um anonymous alcoholic anonymous book um at, at our house and I was cleaning and I found it um, and then I asked my husband about it that was when he came out clean and said um, he had been sober for so many years and stuff I'm like you never told me this even before we got married you know and so um, some things God will show you some things um, you just need to keep praying about the person but it but if you um, like find out like physically because some things are spiritual but then when it's when it becomes a physical mas manifestation you have to talk to the person about it you know there was another time i i found something um uh, with someone who was very close to me um and i'm from africa so we know these things i saw the thing i, I knew this is witchcraft and i told i said where did you get this from i said you should not be mixing with it you're a christian you know you should not be 
doing this and you know we had to talk about that so again some things use wisdom especially if you know the, the personality type some people are can be very mad about certain things so you you should know and then if they are like a mentor or someone that in, is not accessible, like you, you can't reach to them, just pray. Just pray for them. Try to encourage them. Try to be the light for them so they can be, they can see an example of someone who is living the life. Because you can be uh, trying to influence someone, but you are doing the same thing, you know, um, try to be the light for these people. Okay, so directions. Let's go straight to directions because we've spent almost 18 minutes <laughs> talking about these questions. But if you have any more questions, you can DM me for those of you watching the podcast. For those of you on the app, you can um, send me a message. Um, I'm, I'm trying to maybe add like a chat session, but I don't know how that will work. I don't want to make it public. I'm still thinking about that. But anyway, um, you could still just send me an email or, you know, if you want me to address anything or if you want something personal. Um, and then directions. So with directions, it's, it's a whole lot. Um, but the key people that I want to highlight from the Bible was Jonah. God gave him directions. Uh, Joseph, uh, the the the... I usually call him the surrogate dad, but he, he was the dad of Jesus, um, the earthly dad, because God is the ultimate father. Uh, um, so he, God gave him directions. So directions that God will give you are for your protection. Okay. Um, or for your ministry, like for, for Jonah, it was his ministry, uh, or assignment. It was for his assignment. Um, for Joseph, it was a uh, protection to protect the baby Jesus and God appeared to him in a dream. So sometimes directions can come in the form of a dream. And sometimes it can come as just a still small voice that God is to go this way. Uh, there was there was a time, um, many times, like I I because I have set routines. There are set things that I do weekly or month, and God God will say, uh, "Don't do this this week," or "Take this route. Don't go this route." If you're if I'm driving, um, or some days God will just tell me um skip this or you know there are certain things god will tell you for your protection um even when you're talking to someone there are certain people god will say don't tell them that don't don't disclose this uh you know just like abraham even though yeah some people might say it's a lie because he disclosed he didn't disclose that um Sarah was his wife but some things are just wisdom you know because if he had disclosed it earlier who knows what would have happened um with probably the guy would have really slept with 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 Sarah just to spite him or whatever so sometimes you have to use wisdom until it's time you can disclose it but um you know God will direct you um and sometimes even you know the 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 other party God can direct them to because in the case of Abraham God told the guy don't sleep with Sarah that's his wife that's Abraham's wife so sometimes even if God does not direct you he will direct the other person he would he would give the instruction to them so it's it's usually a still small voice as I say the only time God is aggressive and angry is when um there's an injustice and that is why sometimes i get it from some prophets who who are who kind of sound you know this is the american term rude they call it rude but in africa we call it blunt or we it's just how we talk sometimes but um in in america it's seen as rude if you're harsh you know, and sometimes I can understand certain 
prophets who come out harsh because most times if 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 that's how god will speak if he, he is really if there's a, a holy anger if there's something someone is doing or some people are doing to desecrate his home, his house because you, you you can even sense that from how jesus um handled the people who were messing around in the temple and selling and buying and selling in the temple you know that's the 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 the, the aggression comes even with his tone of voice he gets mad and um, he speaks in a loud voice, but many times when God speaks to you, he speaks softly. The Holy Spirit is very gentle, um, like a dove. You know, when, when Jesus was baptized, you see the Holy Spirit came down as a dove. And then sometimes it can come as fire, like you could feel a burning in your spirit. You could feel that burden. You could feel that passion, like especially when it comes to ministry and assignment because that was the thing that God called Jonah to do he told Jonah to go um and preach in Nineveh that's one of my songs wherever you send me um you send Jonah down to Nineveh but he turned his back and headed on for Joppa but Lord, I remember he could not get away. He had to come back to you and do whatever you say, wherever you send me. So wherever you send me, I'll go. So that was Jonah. Um, Jonah disobeyed. All right. God sent him where he sent him. He, he turned his back. He said, no, I'm not heading there. I'm just going to this other place. Because most times when God sends you, it's something uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. There are places that God has sent me to. I, I was like, I'm not going there. I don't like those people because those people don't like me. <laughs> but with time you whether you like it or not you get to do it you know if you if you really want to be obedient to god you have to do it because you will not rest with jonah we see that you know they had to literally throw him he has to, had to ask them to throw him out of the boat they had to literally to throw him out of the boat because they would sink with him if they had kept him there so sometimes when god tells you to do something you have to do it or else you would you would see the consequences like having to stay in in the belly of a, of a fish you know that's extreme but sometimes that is what literally happens to some of us like we have to like really survive in the belly of a fish um until we agree to do what god wants us to do and so that's why for some people it's not that easy to say oh drop this don't do this when it's really god that asks you to do it because when you don't do it you find out that you experience drought you experience emptiness you you experience um hurt and a lot of pain you know because you have not done an unrest in your spirit because you have not done what god wants you to do and so that's why you shouldn't be pushing everybody to do what again when we talk about convictions i'll be i'll be telling you that part that sometimes mentors or people um in the body of christ like to instill their own convictions or push their own activity or their own um assignment on somebody else when god has not called them to that and so for you you trying to be i don't understand why you're trying to push something down somebody's throat when god did not call them to do that they have a, a different assignment allow people to flow in their assignments and do what god wants them to do because they would not get rest and that is why you see some people um are not experiencing the blessings of god for me i've noticed that only when i do god's will that i experience certain blessings you know some people will call it oh, is a hobby 
you what what are you doing all that music for and it's not even making you money <laughs> but if i don't do it most times i i experience a lot of drought i experience a lot of unrest i have to do what god wants me to do when he tells me to do it um i remember there were uh, there was a particular place he wanted me to to serve and every day i would tell him i don't like to go serve in this place i don't even want to mix with these people because they're mean and they're whatever and god would say go there i told you and sometimes after they would have done certain things they would not expect me to show up and they would just see me show up they'll be wondering oh i think she needs a validation no 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 i didn't need nothing i i just had the unrest in my spirit that god wanted me to go and do his will and when it's done sometimes god will tell you okay your work is done here you know there was a time that god instructed me to stop serving at a particular place and that wasn't even to anything to do with the people it was supposed to do with me because i was guilty of um certain things that god wanted me to stop uh doing before i can serve him again and so i had god told me don't don't you step on that pulpit again until you have become right with me you know and so i told the people i'm gonna step down for a while they took it a different way like some of them thought i was just being proud because they thought oh because she can sing she want to show us that she can that we cannot do without her no that was completely that had nothing to do with you it, it had everything to do with me and my relationship with god i had to make my life right with god before i could stand on that pulpit i'm not a I don't want to be a hypocrite standing over there and um, my relationship is not right with him. And so God told me to stop. Okay. I, I continued um, in teaching because I was teaching in the Sunday school. I continued doing the other stuff, praying, but standing on the, the worship team, God told me not to do it until i can get right with him um when i told certain people they they were not happy with that but for me uh, if god tells me not to do something i'm gonna stop all right there are certain churches god tell me don't go there anymore just don't go there you know um and i listen i listen and sometimes um the bible says my sheep hear my voice my sheep know my voice when when you you have walked with God for a while, you would know and you will hear him. And some people might call it delusion. Some people might say whatever they want to say. But I know when I hear from God because I it's a practice. It's constant practice. You know, with time, you will get to understand how he speaks. My my sheep know my voice because they hear him. You, you have heard him several times. You've obeyed him several times. You've seen the consequences. Um quite recently someone was asking me because i had a, a firm belief about about divorce and i was studying about it and i didn't want to file um and so somebody was saying well why did you file like and even the time that i filed like everything had settled a little bit like it wasn't that when it was really hot i didn't even file then i i said um i told him i said there was a time i was praying and i just got the strong voice that i can't give this to you the only reason i can't is because you're you're connected to somebody else that i can't like even though we were separated but in the eyes of god we are still married you know so i had to do what i had to do and i don't have an explanation to anybody about that um plus he was going around saying all kinds of things people started to think that oh he's not going to divorce him because she, uh, she's not going to divorce him because she has ulterior motives so I, I was like let me let me nip this in the bud right now because this is going somewhere else but apart from all of that i received that strong thing i was asking god for something and god was like mm -mm, i can't give it to you 
because you're you're tied to something you're you're connected you you have a covering right now in it's blocking a lot of things so i had to i had to um but that's another story um but anyways because i was willing to forgive him i had already forgiven him i was willing to just leave my life <laughs> you know go on with my life because obviously i've been doing it even before he came into my life i've been living my life and, and taking care of my children so and none of the sabotage and all the things uh, financial sabotage was not would not work on me it won't it won't so um because I, my provider is jesus my provider is god so um even that was not even the issue the issue was bigger than that it was bigger um and i needed to break ties that's all that's all i needed to do and yes god hates divorce i will keep saying that and it's true it's biblical but there are some things that if you have already tied yourself um for you to break free from it's it, it's a lot um i might unpack that when it's time i don't want to talk too much about that but um for you uh because my audience some of you are separated some of you are going through domestic violence some of you have you know those issues um let the lord speak to you but in my case that was the thing god did not tell me to divorce god didn't tell me that but he just it was just when i was praying god told me i can't give this to you because you're connected to someone else that makes me not I can't, I can't do it. You're covered by someone because I'm a woman. Uh, my covering is my husband, you know? So even though I was separated from him in the eyes of God, I, I was still married, you know? So anyway, so God will direct you. All right. He didn't, again, he didn't tell me to divorce, but that was enough word for me to say you know what i'm going to north carolina because when i was here it was difficult trying to get get it done i will go to north carolina and file for the divorce even when it was hard to to find him i had to go look for him but i was able to get the divorce so sometimes god would direct you sometimes he would just drop a word in your spirit sometimes he would tell you just something that you know you you yourself will figure it out you can figure it out you that's why he gave you a brain to to think it through you know and so we should listen we should listen to a direction especially when it's for your protection you should listen and and obey and not turn your back from instruction all right many times and i will drop some scriptures about instruction because sometimes we don't get instructions we get instructions from people all right sometimes god can talk through people but many times he would have said it to you first and when people tell you now it's just a confirmation but he, he has already told you okay um there was a certain business that i was doing in tulsa that god said there are other places you can do this business so just wrap it up wrap it up you know and i did because i'm not going to continue doing something that is not good for my mental state you know at this point in my life i just want peace so there are times when god will tell you and then he will confirm it through other people um and that's another thing uh if if you are in tune with god if you are intimate with god god will tell you stuff don't allow people to come in tell you stuff no if anybody tells you anything it should confirm what you've already heard or you wait for the confirmation because if it's concerning you god orders our steps all right if it's concerning you god will talk to you about it even if he doesn't say, say it before you hear it he would confirm it after you know, he always confirms with his kids. God talks to his kids as long as you're talking to him and you're close to him. And and so, uh, 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 um, again, my sheep hear my voice. A wolf would not come and tell me something that is totally absurd and, and contradictory to what God is telling me. 
you know um i remember they were trying to match me up some time back <laughs> when i was a widow they were trying to match me up and the person was like god said that i'm looking at this guy god god knows his child first of all god knows me <laughs> we talk every day he knows this man cannot handle me at all like for, first of all he would not that man is his child he would not put him through that <laughs> he would not put him through that in my head i was like god god can never say that first of all because god knows me and god knows this guy uh, there's no way he's gonna match us uh, uh, that you got that wrong and indeed it, it proved first of all the guy cannot even have a two minute conversation with me because we were in two different yeah yeah he's he's religious and everything god bless you sister god uh, i'm like bro <laughs> uh-uh you know so some things you just know in your spirit this this people are just trying to match me up you know uh because you are they perceive you as religious and stuff they see this other brother is religious they want to match you uh -um, i'm religious but i got another side of me you know that it's different anyway we won't talk about that part but i'm just saying that sometimes you yourself because you know you and you know god knows you even better and there are certain things god will not <laughs> it's just people's minds so you need to have that confirmation in your spirit you know and and when it came to you know i i, I approached the guy i was like so do you see me as a wife in the future and he was like not really uh i say yeah i said people are just trying to match us uh, but you in your heart you know you and i can't even have two minutes conversation <laughs> you know so sometimes you know your situation better and you talk with god that's why you should always talk with god you should always be in tune with god so a stranger's voice you can't hear because you you already are talking with god if if god has something for you he will tell you he will tell you he might say later on you know like when mary when he told mary he didn't tell joseph yet Mary already, the mother of Jesus, already had the revelation. And so, but Joseph didn't get it. All right. And so sometimes you have to give it time for God to reveal it to the other, the other party. But many times God, will, if it's concerning you, trust me, he will tell you. If you are, if you are working with God, you know, you're one-on-one, -on -one, you're talking to God, he will reveal it to you. So don't allow anybody to come tell you anything. Um, but yes, open your mind to people because sometimes God can reveal things to people, but it will always be as a form of confirmation. Like when the wise men came and said, we're looking for this baby that was born. That was a confirmation. When it is God's time. Remember my song? When it is God's time, things will get clearer. When it is God's time, you will surely rejoice. When it is God's time, you will see confirmation. There will always be a confirmation. When it is God's time, it'll be beautiful. Um, so that's how you you would know, you know, and it, it will resonate in your spirit. You will know because if you are talking with God, you will know. You will know the mind of God concerning you, and you will know if it's in alignment with His will. All right, you know His purpose. You know His plans. Um, at least um, He would have shown you a big picture of. You know, or even if he hasn't, you know, um, just surrender it to him. Say, oh, I heard this from so, so and so person. Lord, um, you direct me. You show me a sign. You let me know if this is really what you want. Okay. And God is interested in every aspect of your life. That's the last thing I want to say. He will direct you in every aspect. So there's no aspect of your life that you want to say, oh, this is uh god will not be interested in this part uh maybe god will talk about this part but god cannot no god is interested in everything he made you he put all those organs in your body your heart your private parts 
all of that. He, he, he has a word for everything because he made all of those things to function the way they function. So your emotions, your, your, your cravings, everything. God, God, don't be afraid to talk to God about it. Don't be afraid. And then he will tell you when it's time, he will tell you that there are certain decisions I have made about my celibacy and stuff. It was a personal thing. You know, it was a direction, instruction by God. And so again, that's why I say your convictions don't throw it down the throat of people. Even though it is a sin to commit fornication, not everybody is called to celibacy. All right. Um, but we can argue that. But um, <clears throat> if that is your goal, <clears throat> make it your goal. All right. Um, some people, um, they have, you know, different beliefs. But abstinence is is right for every Christian. If you are, if you're not yet married, you should abstain. And even if you're married, you should only have sex with your partner. Um, and so, but for, for me, it was something even much deeper than that. So there are certain things that God will reveal it to you. Um, and it's a personal conviction. All right. Some of it directions and no, no topic. There's no topic that is off limits. All right. He will direct you in everything there's no topic of limits god would direct you even to the smallest things the tiniest things and he will direct you what to say where to go when to go <laughs> um that i remember when i was leaving north carolina um at that time i had a caseworker and i told her oh i'm going to oklahoma <laughs> first of all you're a black woman oklahoma they don't they don't tolerate black people over there when i came here i heard that there there are over 13 towns black towns here so who 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 made up that narrative that oh they don't like black people here i i don't even know you know but um yeah because of the past issues in oklahoma but hey right now we even have a, a black mayor in tulsa so some things don't just the, the everything would be showing the, the opposite you know everything would be saying different but you know what god told you you know god even showed me um by some random way um about the church that I, I can be connected to. Uh, when, when, is, when is God's time? Everything just aligns, you know? Um, he showed me every single thing, you know? Um, even made it so easy for me to even get housing. I was um, trying to apply for several housing in other states. It didn't work out. As soon as I applied for housing, in the um in, in in oklahoma i got an immediate response when it is god's time it just aligns trust me to a point that i thought it was a scam <laughs> even when the lady and when i arrived in oklahoma i already planned uh i paid for a whole um a whole week at a hotel because i wasn't i wasn't sure that maybe they've they've taken my money and they've squandered my money <laughs> the lady was the one calling me like are you are you here yet are you at the airport i have your keys come and get my your keys i sent some of my furniture the lady helped me pack my furniture in in my in my uh, um in the townhouse that she had already cleaned and i'm like th th that cannot it has never happened to me i don't know how people get houses but it has never happened to me first of all to get to apply immediately i i get the house i get the the keys i it, it, she helped me relocate she put my furniture when the furniture arrived she put my furniture there she even sent me someone to help me assemble it but all those things don't happen by chance you know it, when it is god's time that's why i i said it the last time it would just align it would just work out my boss um Allowed, first of all, it was pandemic time, so 
uh, you know, there was, uh, I was remote. I had already been remote even before then when I was sick. And then uh, everything just aligned. You know, my boss agreed. They even helped me pay for some of my relocation costs and it, it, everything. And so there are some things you just need to trust God. You just need to trust God. And when he, he really instructs you, when he really instructs you, <laughs> certain things that I do for God, some people think that I spend millions of dollars because most people, the things that I'm, I'm able to do he, for God, some, I know how much some people pay for it, millions of dollars to, to, to do. Sometimes when I release some of my songs, some people think I have spent thousands. No, I haven't. There are some things I even do. I haven't spent a single dime. A single dime or maybe ten dollars twenty dollars you know things that people will spend millions to do that's why some people think I, I am this millionaire because they see me do certain things when it is in God's um, when it is in God's timing and it, 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 it is connected to God you won't even money cannot even pay for it favor just appears you know so trust god obey him and he will do the rest he will provide the right people he will provide the right resources he will give you the right favor he will connect you to the right people you would get the right skills that you don't even need to spend money you know because it is all in his will you know but would it would it be uncomfortable yes would it test your patience sometimes like some of us who are very impatient yes would it tick you off sometimes <laughs> yes but at least you by the end of you know at the end of the day you say you would know that god's god is pleased and that is how you get the well done Anybody needs a well done at the end of the day. That's how you get the well done. At the end of the day, when you, when you go to your father, he'll say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, because you have been faithful in a few things. You have been faithful in a few things, and he will, he will welcome you. He will give you the crown of life. So enjoy God, your relationship with him. All right? Don't, don't make it weird. Because some people are very weird about your relationship. Uh, it's not a delusion, all right? When you're getting word from God, it, it's a direction. Just follow it. Just follow it. There are a lot of times I've escaped certain things. There are certain businesses. Everything checks out. God will say, mm -mm. don't. Don't even respond. <laughs> there are certain people who would ask for quotations from me. And I was saying, they just they're just coming over here to know how much you you're charging and and in some things about your business to learn your trade secrets and stuff like that so just don't even engage you know god will tell you what to do all right uh god bless you i gotta go get my daughter talk to you later bye